Amen. I want us to share the word of God this morning on what I title living as the expression of Christ is in opposition of the flesh for the spirit to prevail. Can I hear you see me? The relationship you have with God centers all on where your mind is focused. I hear you, sir. That is why Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, I mean, verse 1, it says, set your affection on the things above. The things above. Where Christ is seated on Where the right hand Christ of the Father. Where Christ is seated on the right hand of the Father. Set your affections on the things above. Set your affections. Your emotions. Yes. Your thoughts. Yes. Your mind. My God, my God. Your imagination. Yes. Every worrying tendency in you Amen. should be directed even to Jesus. Yes. I hear you. Yes. Says casting all your worries yes. unto him. Unto him. Hallelujah. For he cares. Because even what you call a worry, which is a challenge which you might think is not in the flesh, is flesh in the mind of Christ. I hear you. That is why he says, even when there is a worry. Amen. I that is considered not a sin. Direct it unto him. Cast it unto I, him. Cast it unto him. I hear you, sir. From worries come the activities of the flesh. That's right. From worries, you're separated from the life of God. I hear you. That is why it says in verse 6 that to be carnally minded is death. That's Romans 8, 6. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. Verse 7, my focus, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. There is no meeting point between a Christian who is in church for four hours on a Sunday service and is having a carnal mind. Though he attended four hours of fellowship, there was no meeting point between him and the Savior, Jesus. Clap for my Jesus. My father, my father. My God, my God, my God. My God. Mm. So he says, to be carnally minded is death. Death. For that carnal mind is enmity with God. Many I'm talking to here are already separated. My father. From the life of God. True. They are separated from true fellowship with God. My father. Why? Because the mind is sorrowful. sorrowful. Why? Because the mind is carnal. It's carnal. When we talk of carnal, means the mind is naturally minded. My, my God, God, my God. The mind is centered upon the things that are under the sky. Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. For they that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. The thing that they have to dominate this life. They that are after the things that are under the sky. Yes. Are separated from life with God. I hear you. Can I hear the glory be to God? Glory be to God. If you're here, can I hear you? Hallelujah. Hands. Glory be to God. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no jesting about it. That's right. The Bible says, let a man have proof of his own works. Amen. So that he can have what? Glory in him himself. If you cannot have proof, a testament of your own work of faith, you cannot genuinely stand that confidence of assurance to say, I'm truly saved. That's right. I'm truly in Christ. Make no mistakes. 
together in fellowship, being in church, is no guarantee that we are all in light. I hear right. you. In John 8, 12, if a man follows me, he shall walk in light, light and not in darkness. Anyone that followeth after me shall not have the word, the light of darkness. That's right. But shall walk in light. The question is, is following Jesus a marching line of troops going? The answer is no. Rather, following him all centers on how your mind is driven to and fro. I hear you. That's right. In John 8, 15, Jesus said, I judge no man. You judge. He said, after I judge flesh. no man. But he said, you judge after the flesh. Yes. And Zida came here this morning not to judge any man. Amen. Who are thou to judge another man's servant? <laughs> For God is able to make him stand. That's Hallelujah. right. I came not to judge any man. Amen. But I came to convict your conscience. Hallelujah. Let a man have proof of his own conscience. Amen. One Timothy one seventeen. Take it. Having faith and a good conscience. Why some having neglected have made shipwreck? Take me there. First Timothy one verse seventeen. Verse seventeen to nineteen. Now unto the King Eternal. Now unto the King Eternal. Immortal. Immortal. Invincible. Invincible. The only wise God. The only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and Hallelujah. ever. Hallelujah. Praise God. This church I commit unto thee, son Timothy. This church I commit unto you. According to the prophecies which went before on thee. According to the prophecies went before. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Yes. Holding faith. And Holding faith. And a good conscience, and a good conscience, which some having put away, which some faith, having put away concerning faith, concerning the faith, have made shipwreck. They've made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander? Meaning, with all your works and labor in the faith, when you put away a good conscience, your faith will suffer a capsize. I hear you. Your faith. Will sink. I hear you, sir. you will be effective in church, but because your conscience is not alive to the activities of the flesh that constantly oppose the works of Christ, which are in the spirit, you will lose. That's right. Beloved, many are in the flesh and not after the spirit. And Romans 13, Romans 8:13 says for if you live after the flesh ye shall die, shall die my it's an a statement of assurance my God. that if you live after the flesh yes if you were to make 90 years on earth surely it has come back to 45 i hear my you father, my it's father. a you shall die it's you not die. something doubting there are things you might do behind the scenes there are things you constantly war in your mind. My God. As a Christian. Not living after the Spirit. But having the Spirit. But being dominated by the fleshly desires of this life. I hear you. I assure you. He you are die. on a conscious, steady, and a progressive path of death. My Father. That's right. Put your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. My father.